Hello friends, welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel. Today we're going to continue on in the homeschool library tour and I wanted to show you one of my favorite sets of books. They are the Scholastic Classics. So I'm going to show you how we are using them in our homeschool and some fun features about them and what the reading assignments that my seventh grader is currently um, using with these books. So over here, I just wanted to show you this set of books I picked up a while back, um, actually off of Facebook Marketplace, but I will link to where I found them online for you in the description box. The Scholastic Classics. Let's just read the titles. A Great Expectation, Treasure Island, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, A Christmas Carol, Dracula, Little Women, Kidnapped, The War of the Worlds, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Peter Pan, The Secret Garden, Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, the Call of the Wild, The Count of Monte Cristo, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Pride and Prejudice, The Invisible Man, White Fang, and The Raven. Some great literary fiction and some science fiction in there too. Okay, so we are looking at the schoolroom table where the boys sit. So I'm going to go sit over here in my eldest spot and show you how we're using these books since they're more geared to his age group. But I thought I would just show you first his workspace so this is his reading journal prompts and i just printed those out on cardstock and kind of taped them together and stuck them under his um, desk mat so he can just refer to them so that's always there so whatever day it is he knows what his what he's supposed to be writing about in his reading journal and so we'll say well he's done with this book or whatever he goes through it day by day and I also, I was playing around with the font when I was creating that. I'll link this for you, but in the description box, but we also made a little mini ver like book version just in case that was easier for him, but he liked it. So we just keep it here. And then we're going to look over to our left is where he keeps all his stuff that he is currently using on a daily basis. Um, if you're wondering what, why we have this like poker visor or like banker visor <laughs> it's because he, for some reason, he hates overhead lighting. He always wants all the lights off. Like he would read like in a dark room if he could. I don't know if his eyes, I don't know if his eyes are just really sensitive or if he really just wants to take a nap. I don't know. But what I told him is I'm not turning off the lights because the rest of us need to be able to see. <laughs> I don't want you falling asleep, but I will get you a visor in case the light is legitimately bothering his eyes. So he has worn it before. Most of the time he still doesn't, so but it's there for him just in case. I don't know, does anybody else, does anybody else have a kid like that? Like where you guys are all in the school room and one kid always wants the lights off and like you want the lights on or? All right, so here's his little basket down in this big basket is his science supplies, which you can see he's got one module pulled out right now because he's got a lab he's gonna do on Monday. But everything we need after we make a reading plan, I did a video on the reading plan plan um, I'll link that for you the description box too, box too, in case you're interested in how we come up with reading plans and how we use these um, bookmarks. So there's a stack of them here so he can like, every time he starts a new book and makes a new plan, he has those. So he's just been doing his reading journal page in here. All right, let's start by just talking a little bit more about these books. I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite features and then we'll get to how we are incorporating them into um, a reading journal, a daily reading journal, and some fun stuff like that. Okay, back to this set of books, the Scholastic Classics. Um, it's a really pretty set. It has like the linen cover, and they all have nice illustrations on the covers. And I like the muted colors on them too. I'm not one. I'm not a one that loves like really bold colors. I prefer muted colors, but um, yeah. So I like these. I want to say personally, I think I somebody had these on Facebook for like forty dollars. I was like immediately like 
to my husband, like, get in the car, we're going. <laughs> it was like seven o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night or something. I'm like messaging them. I'm like, I will come get them now. <laughs> Anyways, so they do kind of span a little bit of ages, but I think it's fine to have them read them all in like middle school is fine too. But here's Peter Pan. And so you can tell this is like a, you know, not as long of a book. There are not illustrations within the book, sadly, but they are really beautifully cleanly printed. Just a really nice quality, nice thick paper. Um, and then a really nice thing about them in the back at the end, they have this, look, family reading guide. So there's a book summary. There's a share your thoughts, right? So you can read these to your kids and just talk to them, have a discussion, or you could use these for an end of reading, um, like reading response. And then they have a little family activity, stage your own version of Peter Pan, right? Look at all these things they have. Like these step-by-step -step instructions for planning your own version of Peter Pan. So you can act it out. It has, they all have an about the author page and about the introduction author. If there was somebody who wrote something as an introduction. Anyway, so I just think that's a really nice touch for homeschooling families to have. I wish all books had that. It's just so thoughtful and not too much, you know? But just a nice wrap up when you when they finish a book. Everett has read Anne of Green Gables, and I did. Sign, I mean, you guys know we're like I consider the Robinson curriculum to be the base of our education, and that's basically the base of our book list. But sometimes I go off the list and add in things like this. Um, one, <laughs> if you have a, 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 if you're following like RC or any book list, feel free that if you have a quality book that and you own it, feel free to use it. You don't have to spend more. Sometimes I'm like just not buying books because I'm like, well, I already have these ones. I think these are quality literature and um, I can save myself some money by not buying necessarily a book list book. For me, because I don't follow, I don't um, exclusively use the RC vocabulary program. That doesn't really matter. I can, if you're tying your vocabulary directly to your you know, like they do with RC, then you would have to just skip vocabulary for that book for this time that they're reading this book or, you know, look through it and make your own little vocab list for it or use some other generic, something, some other kind of book, uh, vocabulary workbook or something. It might be nice. I love the um, Red Hot Root Words. There's like two uh, books, especially the first one, to get the kids aware of the Latin um, roots of like our affixes and things like that. It's great to just have that maybe as a backup if you switch books on the list to do your vocab on. I think you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm using too many words to say something really simple. Oh, anyways, but Anne of Green Gables was kind of important to me. And this set also came with the second book, Anne of Avonlea, because these books made such an impact on me as a child. I think I read the whole series when I was like in third grade. And they, I just, I always said like they became a permanent part of my personality. Like Anne is a permanent part of my personality. Now. <laughs> so she like, lives, she'll live in my head forever. You know, her and like Nancy Drew, they live in my head forever. I don't know who, I don't even know who Laurel would be without like Anne and Nancy. <laughs> Do you, do you guys have characters like that? Anyways, so I just have him read this just so he could like maybe understand his mama a little better, you know? Anyways, so he's read that one. I just want to show you, they just cover a lot of different genres. Like here's uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. But of course I love the movie. Um, yeah, about the author. I love that they have the about the author section. Family reading guide, family activity. Search for Dracula. Might be a fun one to have your kids read at a, you know, this time of year in October if they're old enough or if you think that this book is appropriate. I don't know if all, I don't know that all families have their kids read this kind of stuff. Anyway, so, uh, and then of course, Great Expectations. It's a classic, nice big book. 
We just cover so many different types of stories. We had Charles Dickens. Again, this one had three. Um, share your thoughts. The family activity for this one is as, oh, it's to make a time capsule. So anyways, that was just a little sampling of the books. So you can just see that they're very, they're very good quality, uh, well-made books and they have those little extras in the back, which I just absolutely love. Okay, War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Everett just finished this one. And then we watched the movie and I love that movie with Tom Cruise, War of the Worlds. It's so, it's so suspenseful and so well done. It's one of those movies that like, no matter how many times I've watched it, every time I'm like, that is a good movie. Like I'm just like into it, you know? But the book was really good. Of course, the book is set in the, uh, I think late 1800s. Everett really enjoyed this book. This is one of those books where he was like reading ahead. Like he was going, even though we had a reading plan, um, for him, he was reading faster. He wanted to read more. Then afterwards, we looked up the Orson Welles radio broadcast. If you guys are probably familiar with that story about how Welles, different, they're not related um, to H.G. Wells, spelled different, but he actually read, he kind of like adapted the story um, for his radio broadcast. So it made it sound like aliens were actually attacking like it was like a dramatization and it said in the beginning that it was like dramatization but some people missed the beginning of the show and really thought that the earth was being attacked by martians <laughs> and we were reading up on it we listened to the broadcast like uh over like what, he finished the book and then we like were talking about it and then we're like let's look that you know we saw this let's look that up and so during lunch we were like eating lunch in the kitchen like listening to the broadcast like the whole like all me and all the kids were in there uh we read that like some of the people that got like that thought that they were actually being attacked by Martians actually like got together and tried to sue him like later. <laughs> Anyways, super fun activity, but and also just making good memories. Like I'll always remember us like eating lunch in the kitchen, like kids sitting on counters, listening to that radio broadcast with me. He also looked up a lot of stuff like as he was reading this, he just naturally, oh, I guess I'll, I'll switch gears. I'll show you kind of how we are using, right? The reading journal prompts with his everything notebook. It has a reading journal page. Oh, here's like, here's one of War of the Worlds. <clears throat> so he wrote what pages he read. So that day he read 134 to 175, the genre of sci-fi. Chapter notes, um, he says, so I think it's day, I think it's 17. Cause like we have 20 days of prompts. So day 17 said, Character development. What changes have you seen in your character or characters are the main subject? Can you identify a cause and effect relationship between events and those changes? So kind of, I was trying to make it generic enough that it could maybe, this could maybe apply to like nonfiction books too, or like biographies and things like that. But he says, all the characters have become more grim and mean. And then, oh, he also did journal day 18. The aliens will get sick and die. What was day 18? How did the story end? Oh yeah. How were conflicts resolved? How do you feel about the resolution? Are you satisfied as a reader? Why? You can tell he's like, he's less into writing when it comes to uh, like responses. Like he just gives like the bare bones, but this is new to us. So I'm not pressing him super hard on it right now. And he also has space where he can draw. Or if he looked up something, he could print something out. Like Almost every day when he was reading, he was, cause it's set in London, you know, in the late, I think in the 1880s or something, 1880s, 1890s, like every day after he was reading, he would be Googling like what, uh, what did like clothes did people wear? He wanted to look up that. He wanted to look up what did houses look like? Oh, here's one. See, he was drawing, he was trying to think, draw their houses. He was drawing townhouses in London, their chimneys. Yeah, so for him, this seems to be you know, we want to actually be doing something that they can actually accomplish and feel good about. Oh, see, now he's on to a new book, which is a history book. So it's his note, his reading journal stuff is looking different now. But so that's all he does. He reads um, well, whatever our book, our reading plan is, which he'll have, you know, documented on here. And um, then he'll just kind of check it off as he goes. He'll look up what reading journal day and if he like that's why sometimes he was doing like two he was answering two journal prompts because he was um 
making up because he read past he did you know more than one day's worth of reading so he would sometimes do two journal entries and sometimes he wrote more sometimes he wrote less I, I, I go back to remembering what is RC like the I say we're RC based that's what I always come back to and what I kind of measure myself against like they don't do any reading assignments at all um, the RC program it's not required that they do any reading assignment they just read it and they study the vocab that's it so I feel totally fine just having him do these little journal prompts and he doesn't have to do like a full book report or anything especially on books from this series that have all those you know discussion questions at the end and like activities and stuff it's just so pleasant things get real serious uh with literature when you get to high school you know so let's just like enjoy ourselves and take a little bit of heat off of the kids <laughs> um he already has a writing intensive class he's we're doing writing and rhetoric so he already has an intensive you know writing that we're doing separate so i don't want this to be another writing intensive right this is reading intensive versus writing intensive which is his actual composition subjects anyways so i just i just love these books again i'm gonna link them for you where i could find them online in the description box if you can find them used um, I mean, I think you'll have to find them used because I don't believe they're not still, I, I didn't see any them, like, they're not still producing these as far as I know. If you guys have any more sets, if you guys know of any more sets like this um, or something similar, link them for us in, like, in the description. Like, write, drop me a comment, the name of them, or if you have a link, drop it in the description um, or in the comment section because I love this type of series. Okay. Have a good week.